Sure, yeah. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here. This is obviously an exciting uh, trip for, for our team. We just, just got here in Indianapolis, and uh, it's, so far it's been great, you know, in terms of the hospitality of everybody here in Indianapolis. Uh, had a great, good week of practice against, you know, getting prepared for uh, what we think is one of the best coach teams and best teams, uh, not only in, in the Big Ten, but, but in the country. And uh, had a good week of practice and excited to get playing. Coach, we're going to start right in front of you. Row three, please. Please identify your uh, name and outlet. Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Uh, Ryan, we don't usually get to talk to you the day before a game, but as you saw Justin go through the week practicing with that knee and the brace and everything, do you have more confidence that he can run most of the offense than you had at the start of the week as you get ready tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I think um, he's done a great job this week preparing and, uh, you know, it's something he's been kind of dealing with, but uh, he's done a great job and our training staff's been doing a great job of getting him ready and he's had a good strong week of practice. Second row to your right, Coach. Yeah, Ryan, I asked you this the other day, but um, not only would you be the first team to win three outright Big Ten championships in a row, it's never been done at all. What kind of achievement would that be for you? Well, I mean, it certainly would mean a lot. I, I don't know, uh, you know, in terms of sitting back and reflecting on what that would mean, you know, down the road. We'll, we'll kind of think about that as, as we get, uh, you know, done with the season, maybe in February. But right now, it's, it's all eyes on this game, and playing a great game and keep preparing, you know, for the next, uh, you know, night to, to make sure that, you know, we're, we're playing our best ball because, you know, we want to make sure we're, like we talked about, accelerating through the finish line, which is the Big Ten championship game has been a goal. It's been on our board for a long time. And, and uh, so it's all about being locked in, focusing on executing at a high level. At a game like this, there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of hoopla when you come into the city and they do a great job of that. But really, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to execution and who does their job on the field. and. And that's what the focus is on right now. A couple of questions uh, to our left, row two. Hey, right now, Bill Landis from The Athletic. Uh, will Jonathan Cooper still travel with you guys, uh, even though he's not playing? And is there any chance that you might still dress him in these games, just in case you might need him? Uh, he will travel with us, but well, we won't dress him, though. Um, you know, unless he just made a strong case for why he'd want to dress, what, what the plan is for him not to. We just. Uh, we didn't want to risk putting him on the field. And, you know, it's a decision you have to make, taking emotion out of it. Um, as much as we'd love to have him in a game like this, uh, we just think that the best thing to do is to ha have a whole year, and he deserves that. He deserves to have a full season, his senior year, uh, healthy and playing a high level of football, which we know he's capable of. Uh, I know it's going to hurt him more than anybody not having him out there uh, Saturday, but, but we think it's the right thing to do. Stay in row two. Hey, Ryan Ari from The Athletic. Ari Wasserman from The Athletic. Um, Garrett Wilson had some muffed punts. I know it's been a topic of conversation for you guys. Um, is there any consideration for, you know, moving guys around in that area? Are you going to stick with him, let him go through his freshman growing pains? And is that just somebody you want to have on the field in that situation? Yeah, um, you know, he's got to take care of the ball, but, uh, but he'll be our, our returner, uh, you know, tomorrow night. Uh, we, we believe in him. We trust in him. We think he has uh, the ability to be an elite returner. And so, you know, we'll just keep working through it and get his eyes on that, that ball and catch it. We know he's capable of. We see what he's done in practice. I think the other day, um, you know, it, the wind was a little gusty. You know, you could see that on two plays, in my opinion. One was that play. And then also, you know, Chris Alave's uh, long ball. The ball kind of caught it at the end and caught him in the face. And um, so, you know, there's no excuse. But, um, you know, an indoor situation with no weather, you know, we expect him to do a great job and be 100% catching the ball. Go ahead and stay right here in row two, and then we're going to go back to our right. Go ahead. We've been asking a lot about Garrett all year and his progression and just, you know, kind of following that Chris Olave plan of getting better as his freshman year. Is he peaking at the right time? And I know that you've had a very deep receiver rotation all year, but is this somebody that is kind of reaching a, a point that you thought he could get to this year? Well, he's practicing much better, and then to see him make those plays the other day, um, you know, that's, that's huge. But there, there is a process, and it takes time. It doesn't happen as, as talented as he is and some of the other guys are. It takes time, and, uh, you know, his, his practice habits have improved, and, uh, and then you saw that, you know. And so I think, you know, Chris is a great example of that last year, and now you get a chance to see, uh, you know, Garrett, you know, shine in one of the biggest moments. And so now uh, he's got to now carry that over into this game. You know, he can't. Uh, that game's behind us. You've got to focus on this game, just like everybody else. But, but it was good to see a young guy step up in that moment. We're going to stay right here in row two before we switch to our right. Doug Lee Maurice from Cleveland.com. Um, Ryan, I'm not trying to get, like, secret info on Justin or anything. And I, and I guess I'm not even drawing a direct comparison. But in 2017, when you guys were here, you had a quarterback who was coming off 
a knee injury, and you're going to have to figure out a way to have JT Barrett be effective and be in this game. For any play caller, for any coach, when you have a quarterback who has something physically, just what is the process like of trying to figure out, well, I think the game might go like this. We're not 100% sure what he's going to be like physically on Saturday. How do you sort of prepare yourself, and how will you react into the game once you see Justin moving around? Uh, well, first, uh, you know, JT had that procedure done, and, and I think that was a very different injury. Uh, but I, I do hear the comparison of what you're, what you're saying. Uh, no, I mean, we, we, we talked to the training staff, talked to, to our people, and just, you know, ask all those questions, you know, what the risks are and what they aren't. And, uh, you know, everything we, we've heard back is that, you know, it's 100% uh, go and he's ready to roll. And so then we just we go from there. And uh, if there was any question on that, then we certainly, you know, would take precautions. But uh, we feel great. He's had a good week of practice. We're ready to roll. Coach, I'm going to introduce you to our junior journalists program. We've got some young aspiring journalists. We're going to take two questions in the back row on the right. Go ahead. Um, Landry Prizer, junior, jur junior journalism. How do you plan on stopping the rush attack of Jonathan Taylor in Wisconsin? Well, it's a team effort. It's a, it's a good question. Uh, there's a lot that goes with it. First off, it starts with the defensive line and doing a great job on the line of scrimmage. Uh, and then it's everybody else who fits into the run. Everybody has to be involved with it, the linebackers and certainly the secondary. And uh, you got to wrap up, but it takes more than one guy. And uh, we got to do a good job of being physical, but we also have to uh, pursue to the ball. Everybody has to pursue to the ball, and sometimes it'll take multiple guys to get them down. Um, but you have to win your one-on-one matchups at the end of the day, and if you defeat a block and you get over and you get a chance to tackle them, you got to wrap them up. Hi, I'm Varad from, junior, from the Junior Journalist Program, and... As your first year in head coach, um, what are your goals, goals for uh, Fields and Young? What, what are my, our goals for them? Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we really didn't set any individual goals in terms of anything other than being a great teammate and you know, doing a good job in terms of creating leadership. That's a huge part of it for us. And both uh, Justin and, and Chase, the two guys you asked about, uh, they both stepped into different situations. You know, Justin was the quarterback and hadn't had any, any uh, collegiate starts, came in into the program new in January. And then Chase had been in the program. Had, this is his third year. Um, and both of those guys really stepped up into leadership roles this year. have done an unbelievable job. And of all the things that they've been um, you know, credited for this year, the thing that I'm the most proud of is their leadership and the way they've gone about uh, their business week in and week out. Coach, we'll stay to your right, third row on the right. Colton Bartholomew, Wisconsin State Journal. What has Greg Madison meant to you and your staff in his first year with you guys at Ohio State? Well, he's bring an um, uh, unbelievable set of you know, experience to the table. And uh, in that whole defensive room, I thought they've really done a great job of uh, coming together in a short period of time and creating uh, good chemistry over there. Because I think if you, if you want to have good chemistry on a team, you have to have good chemistry on your coaching staff. And uh, you know, Greg's been through it before. He's a veteran. Uh, he knows what it takes. Uh, you know, to win at the highest level and uh, his experience and, you know, just the fact that he's been there before um, really has been big for us. And, um, and, and then also just, again, that, that whole staff and the way that they've uh, built chemistry has been really good. But, but again, when you have somebody with experience who has the answers, when, when things are, are flying around and the bullets are flying, it's always good to know that someone's been in the fire before. Second row to the right. Please raise your hand, please, and I'll uh, identify for the next question. Brian, Joey Coffin, uh, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, getting Sean Wade back this week, what do you think is the biggest thing, if of all the things that he does for you guys, what's the best thing he does to help you guys? Well, he, he brings a certain level of uh, calmness to that defense because uh, he has so much experience there. Um, he's had a good week of practice, and uh, he can identify what's happening. He's got a lot of experience in there. You know, last week we kind of uh, moved Damon inside and that um, created a little bit of unrest. We moved him back and then things calmed down a little bit. But Sean has got a lot of experience. He's played a lot of football. He can recognize things. He's versatile and he's good in the running in the pass game. To the left. Uh, Tim May, Letter Monroe. Uh, Ryan, uh, I was wondering, have we made too much about a rematch five, six weeks after you've played a team? And number two, what are you behooved to change up a little bit in his signals, et cetera? Uh, as you go into a game like this? Well, no, I mean, it, it's, it's a rematch, and so I know that's rare in college football, but again, you can't, I don't think you make too much of it in the fact that uh, you can't all of a sudden just start changing everything you do. 
uh, but you also can't do the same exact thing you did before. So there's somewhere in between. I think that's the balance you try to find is, you know, what kind of wrinkles can you show, but then allow the guys to play. Because again, at the end of the day, in an environment like this, in this type of atmosphere, it's about players, not plays. And allowing these guys to play freely and then, you know, uh, have their impact on the game based on what you're giving the guys and, and making sure they're clean, playing with a clear mind. And that's the most important thing to me in a game like this. Row three to the right. Joe Dempsey with Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Ryan, um, in the off season we talked with JK a lot about how he wanted to improve and how uh, he, he wasn't hitting the home runs last year that he wanted to. This year, he's been hitting some of those home runs. How important has he been for your offense, and what differences have you seen in him this year? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. I think our, our blocking um, with the offensive line has been excellent. Um, the guys inside, the, 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 getting in the guys on the edge in, in terms of tackle and tight end have been off the charts. But he's run with an edge. Um, he's run with a chip on his shoulder all season. And like you said, he's been running harder. So, you know, those four yard runs are becoming five and six and then and then the big plays take care of themselves. And, um, you know, the big thing for him is just taking care of that ball, which for the most part he's done a great job of this year. Um, but that's going to be a huge emphasis point going into this game. Run with your pads down, but take care of the football. Uh, trust your offensive line, trust your reads. And, and if you do that, you're going to have one heck of a night. Um, but that's that's the, the message to JK this week. Questions for Coach Day. Front row here left. Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. I know that there's a lot of, you know, uh, bumps and bruises and people banged up this time of year, but in terms of the status report, I think that was probably the cleanest one we've seen maybe since the first week of the season. Was the, with these last couple games and, and the stakes that were there, did you approach how you were kind of managing that differently, knowing you also still had to keep as many people healthy for these, this kind of what's this game and what could be coming up behind it too? Well, I, I think it's more a, um, a product of just the way the season's gone with the two bye weeks and then uh, us getting some of our starters out of the game early on in the season. And then, you know, the, the, like you said, we're a pretty, pretty clean team right now in terms of uh, injuries. So uh, it has nothing to do with what we've done the last couple of weeks other than the fact that, you know, we held Sean out because we didn't think he was 100%. And uh, I, I don't think it, it, you can do that to some, you know, somebody like Sean. You can't put him in the game in, in a skill position if he's not where he needs to be. And uh, we wouldn't do that to him. So. But if anybody's you know ready to play or physically ready to play, we're not going to hold them back. Certainly, uh, in the you know games like that, Penn State team up north, and then and then this one right here. So it's all hands on deck to try to get this thing because, like we say, it's like March Madness, and uh, we need everybody uh, you know to do their job, whether it's you know the right guard on field goal or starting quarterback. You know we need everybody. On the left in row three, and then follow in row two. Uh, Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row. Ryan, uh, Josh Myers probably didn't get as much recognition as he might have deserved on those Big Ten, all Big Ten teams. Uh, what has he meant for the offensive line this year? I know you guys had a lot of returning uh, starters within Jonah and Thayer, but what has Josh Myers meant the offensive line so far this year? Yeah, I don't know if I can really put it into words. I just think for a first-time starter and uh, what he's done this year has been excellent. And uh, he's as good as, as I've been around at that age. Uh, his communication, his ability to uh, get the calls from from uh, tackle to tackle. Uh, his pad level, his strength, his protection, his athleticism. Uh, when you put that all together, his leadership, you put that all together. I mean, he's he's very very talented and really good, and he's been playing really good for us. Stay in row three. Yeah. Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Uh, to go back to what you said, Ryan, about J.K.'s chip on his shoulder. He's spent all year feeling underappreciated a little bit nationally. He seems to, you know, feel slighted. And then this week he doesn't win Big Ten running back of the year. I'm not asking for a recount or any votes or anything, but is that something that you sense motivates him or has he paid any attention to that this week going into two tomorrow night? Well, I think if I'm not speaking for JK, you'd have to ask him that. But uh, I know if it was me, I, I, you know, I'd ask what else do I need to do, you know? And I think he deserves to be considered the best running back in the country. But um, that, that, hasn't, that hasn't really necessarily been the case, and I know that bothers him, and I know he runs with a chip on his shoulder because of that, but um, you'd have to ask him how he feels. I know it bothers me, um, but, you know, he, he still has some more opportunities to prove himself. Here. To the right, row two. Yeah, Bill Rabino at the Columbus Dispatch. When we talked to KJ the other day, uh, he's within reach of, of the career all-time receiving record at Ohio State, but he admitted it's been a frustrating year because the ball has been spread around so much, the running game is better. 
he's had to sublimate his own personal goals, and that's something the whole team has done. Can you kind of speak to that about, J, about KJ's season and also just about the fact that some of these guys are not getting the stats that they would otherwise? Yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a funny thing when you're the, uh, the number one scoring offense in the country and, and um, you know, there's, there's guys in the team who still feel like they don't have the numbers or stats that they, they would like. You know, it, it's a good problem to have, but, you know, when, when you play in some of the games like we've played early in the season and, and those guys aren't playing in the second half, that's kind of one of the, the give and take. You know, there's, there's positive and negatives to everything, but... But now that we're playing in these big games, you know, now everyone's having an opportunity to show up and get these stats. So, you know, these last couple of games, you know, this one right here, uh, they're all huge opportunities. And, and I think all those guys to a man would say to you uh, that that's not the number one goal is to get, uh, you know, receptions or, or touches or touchdowns or anything like that. The number one goal is to, to win championships. And, and that's why everybody's here and that's been the goal. And that's what makes this team special is that they don't care about that. They, they celebrate with their teammates and it's all about winning. Well, yeah, I think he's done it. I mean, coming back and he's been the guy, you know, he kind of split time with Paris last year and he's been the guy. Um, you know, we, we play in a little bit of 12 personnel. He comes out, but I mean, he's, he's the H for us and he does a great job in there. He's clutch. He's makes some big plays in big games. We all know that he's reliable and um, he does a great job on the inside and, and he's been a captain of this team. And so, um, you know, the, the guys who left last year, you know, they left a legacy behind. Well, now, you know, KJ, Austin, and Ben have an opportunity to leave a legacy behind because we've still got a lot of football to play. And, uh, you know, I think overall he's been a, done a great job of leadership this year. We have about 10 minutes remaining with Coach Day. We'll go to the back, and then we'll come back here to the front. Hey, Coach, Kyle Babcock, Sports Report Media. You've arguably, arguably got one of the best teams in the country. Your guys are undefeated. They're playing for the championship. How do you keep these guys motivated each week knowing that they're a step closer to that championship now, Big Ten championship? Uh, well, uh, they've been highly motivated all year. Um, and they know, uh, you know we, we talk about the race to the Big Ten championship and uh, the finish line to this race, which is the Big Ten championship. Uh, you can see the finish line. And the goal and visual has been accelerating through that finish line, not, not um, you know, pulling up here. Because uh, that's what great athletes do, that's what great teams do, is they accelerate at the end. And we, we've known that this has been coming, this has been one of our goals. Um, we don't talk too much about what's next, we kind of really stay in the moment. Uh, during the bye weeks and preseason, we, we took a look at the schedule and talked through what the season was going to be like. And we knew that the end of the season was going to be hard to, to have, we expected to be in three top ten games at the end of the, end of the season. That's not easy to do for 18, 19, and 20 year old guys to play in uh, you know, emotional games like this. And it started with a, with a top 10 win against Penn State at home. Then we went up there, up north, and, and won last week. And now we come to Indianapolis for this one. So we knew this three-game stretch was coming. Um, the guys have been prepared. I think they've had their eyes on this for a long time. And, and now it's just you put your head down and you just go as hard as you can to get through this finish line and win the game. Row two. Doug Lamarie, Cleveland.com. Ryan, with the way you guys have taken starters out in the second half this year. We know you don't want to run it up. We know you want to get your backups in. You want to keep guys healthy. How much did you factor into that wanting your top guys to be fresh and strong in November and December? Was that part of, how does that factor in? And what have you seen of your starters at this point in the season of how worn down or how fresh they are with the time they've had offensive second halves? I think uh, the answer to your question, yes, to all of the above that you said, you know, when, when you're in those situations, you want to get guys, uh, you know, some work, but you also want to get those guys fresh late in the season, the, the starters. And I think you could see that, by the way, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball, the way our lines are coming off the ball. You, know, you kind of look to me uh, on an offensive and defensive line based on are they standing up or are they coming off the ball and going forward this time of year? And uh, I think you'll see our guys are going forward. I think our running backs are running hard with power. And our guys look fast on the perimeter. So, uh, yeah, I think you know, part of the reason for that is just the way the season's played out. We've got two questions on our left, row three, and then two. Uh, Andy Anders, The Lantern. Uh, you guys have been able to run the ball from a lot of different looks, whether it's under center or the zone reads and everything else. How is that versatility on the ground important against a team that defends the run so well, like Wisconsin? Yeah, it's hard. You know, these guys do an unbelievable job. Um, you know, Coach Leonard and, and that whole defensive staff, they got really veteran guys. Uh, it's very hard to find an inch on them. 
And so, yeah, you got to be creative. You got to change things up. You got to change up formations. You got to change up schemes. You got to do a lot of different things to put them in stress uh, to move the ball. And then they play great situational, great third down, great in the red zone. So uh, it's a big challenge for our offense. And, uh, you know, in the first half of that game, we didn't play great. Um, defense did. And, and then, you know, we started to uh, do a little better in the second half. But it's a big challenge. So our guys are ready for it. They know the challenge and they know the issues. Go ahead, row two. Ryan, maybe along those same lines, the only three teams in the country who have more rushing yards than you guys are the service academies. And I remember before the season, you talked about not yet knowing what this team's offensive identity might be. You were going to sort of learn that over time. I wonder, did you have any inkling? And I know you have balance, but I think when people look at you guys, they see a physical team that runs the ball. Did you have any inkling that you guys could be that? Was there any hope that you could be that when you took a, a survey of the personnel you have? I didn't, didn't really know exactly what it was going to be. I knew we had a young uh, quarterback who um, a lot of question marks about. We had a, a pretty good veteran wide receiving core and tight ends. Um, and we had four new guys in the offensive line. So to say that, uh, you know, knew it was going to look just like this, no. I had an idea. Uh, really felt like, you know, Wyatt and, uh, and Josh, you know, coming back off of last year, uh, we, we kind of knew what we had in Brandon Bowen. But then having Jonah to come in there, you know, we had some some promise that, that we could do a good job moving people off the ball. Um, but the way JK's run and the way we've moved people off the ball has been, um, you know, something that's gotten stronger as the season's gone on. And then um, to see, you know, Justin flourish, in, the, in especially in these big games and just the way that he's competed, I think that's where this, this, uh, the journey has come. And like we said in the preseason, that was, you know, what I was most excited about was to kind of figure that part out on offense and defense. And um, there's still a lot to be written. and. Uh, you know, still, I, I still don't think we've played our best football yet. I think in, in all three phases, uh, we have, we've yet to put together just a dominant performance in all three phases. Uh, and so that's another challenge that we've given the team this year. You know, what, what's the best version of this team? And so that's, that's something we're working on this week. We've got about four to five minutes left uh, for any questions. We've got one here. Stay in the second row. Hey, Ryan. Um, when you look at the schedule or the schedule you guys had at the beginning of the year, you might look at it and say Penn State, Michigan, Big Ten Championship, two playoff games in a row to win a national title. Um, now that you're in the midst of that pretty brutal run in terms of the opponents you're playing, I'm wondering how is your team in the middle of it? Are you better off for being in the midst of something like this or is it harder because hey, the teams are better and you're banged up? I mean, now that you're like in the thick of that run and that stretch, looking ahead at you know, tomorrow and what might be ahead. How do you feel this team has responded to that? I, you know, I don't think we'll know until we get done with tomorrow night. But um, I think when you're in when you're in stretches like this, you just go. You don't you don't start thinking about it. You don't start worrying about it. You go. You're smart about how you practice. Um, but when you look at the injury report, we're pretty clean right now. And I thought we had a good week of practice. I expect us to play fast uh, tomorrow night. But uh, but we'll, we'll know more when we get done with the game. Um, but it is. It's a tough stretch. Uh, but it's something we've been preparing for, and I think the team's ready for it. People seem to think that you can protect a quarterback uh, in play calling, et cetera. And I'm just wondering, your approach tomorrow with Justin Fields is going to be, without giving away secrets, obviously, what? Well, I, you know, when people ask me that question, the thing I go back to is really, you know, the plays this year that you know, he's got himself a little uh, bumped and bruises were actually passes. So. <laughs> Uh, he's done a good job in the run game of, of, of taking care of himself. Um, and so th there's only so much we can do. You know, the, the one in the um, Penn State game, he was rolling out to his left on that fourth down. And then the other one, you know, he got hit in the pocket as well. So, uh, you know, you just do the best you can. And uh, you try to, um, you know, run the plays you think are going to be the most successful. And, and you go from there. But I think when you start to, you know, be hesitant or overcautious, then you just set yourself up uh, for, for failure. So we'll be aggressive and, and we'll go. Take one more question from row two and then we'll have our photo session. Ryan, we've seen all year the way Justin has been in control of this offense on the field. Um, he seems like a very low key, even keeled, kind of no drama guy off the field, especially at the quarterback position. What does that do for a team if, it, it, from our vantage point, it feels like Justin just sort of takes care of business and there's not a lot of outside stuff with him that we know sometimes with quarterbacks, there, there can be stuff like that. Well, I think um, his, his family's done a tremendous job of grounding him. Um, he has a, a tremendous approach and he's, he's humble. Um, but 
uh, deep inside, there's a, there's a fiery, competitive dude in there who uh, just tries to go and take your heart out when he's at the game. Uh, but he's got an interesting demeanor about him. You know, he's just very smooth, and, and you don't see much uh, on the surface, but uh, he's very, very competitive. And, uh, you know, that's something I didn't know about him until he started playing in these big games. And uh, nothing but the utmost respect for him as a person and his character and his approach. He's a really good player.